Wilson speech some months before. The 14 points, says Clemenceau scornfully, I do not accept any of them. Italy's Orlando is also unimpressed. Britain's Lloyd George finally takes the initiative with a cable to Washington expressing their doubts. The response on October 23rd, 1918 is a Wilson message aimed at breaking the army's grip on German policy. Germany must get rid of its military masters and monarchical autocrats. The military master, Ludendorff, is ousted in a showdown with the civilian government. A Reichstag leader, Matthias Erzberger, is appointed to head an armistice mission to France. The Allies will deal with the civilian and give German militarists the material for a myth that the German army was betrayed. On the night of November 7, 1918, the delegation crosses the French lines in an auto convoy under a white flag with a French bugler on the running board. A rendezvous place, a railroad car that is being rolled toward a siding 85 miles behind the front in the woods of Compiègne. This place will become a shrine of French victory and German vengeance. The Allied delegation is composed of two British admirals and two French generals, headed by General Foch. The Germans ask for proposals. They are handed firm conditions. Withdrawal beyond the Rhine. An Allied occupation. The blockade to continue until a formal treaty is signed. Horrified, the Germans ask for time. Impatient to start celebrating, America welcomes a report leaked to Roy Howard of the United Press by a high-ranking officer. The news is premature. There is still time for men to die, an empire to fall. Imperial pride dies hard. On the eve of the 1918 armistice mission, the German fleet is massed for a last glorious sortie. Attack the British fleet, and Germany can march, not crawl, to the truce talks. The sailors answer, mutiny. Mutiny swells into revolution in the port of Kiel, in Munich, Stuttgart, Berlin. Republics proclaimed in the streets, Bolshevist, Socialist, any banner that promises an end to the war. The signal of defeat, first raised by Ludendorff, has cut the German home front loose from its loyalties. And German soldiers join in the demand. Down with the Kaiser. The Kaiser, at army headquarters in Belgium, resists public demand and private advice. He insists he will march home to Berlin at the head of his army. A general tells him, Sire, you no longer have an army. On the morning of November 10th, 1918, under guard to protect him from assassination, the Kaiser boards a train that will take him to sanctuary in neutral Holland. His empire dwindles to a Dutch garden. The dynasty ends with Wilhelm II a signature on a letter of abdication. A new government under socialist Friedrich Ebert replaces Max von Baden, who resigns in princely sympathy with his cousin, the Kaiser. Ebert's first order is to the German truce delegation, still weighing Foch's terms. The order, get a settlement while there is still something to save. The fear of a Bolshevist Germany spurs both sides. At 5.10 a.m. on November 11, 1918, 
the armistice is signed. The ceasefire, rumored for days and now confirmed, will go into effect at 11 o'clock. By agreement, there will be six more hours of war. Six hours left. The British attack beyond Mons, the scene of their first defeat in 1914. The Americans drive on Sedan, the objective of their Meuse-Argonne campaign. One Yank regiment is ordered over the top at 10.55. And German artillery shells Verdun. On the morning of Armistice Day, there are more than 2,000 American casualties, and British, and French, and German. ceasefire. War, the deadly game, will end with one last convulsive competition. Everyone wants, everyone will claim, the honor of firing the last shot. It was not a barrage, one observer will remember, but a deluge. An American correspondent has been waiting to see what would happen at 11 o'clock. Nothing happened, he writes. The war just ended. There is nothing to separate armies now except Foch's stern order. No fraternization. If an enemy soldier tries to cross your lines, shoot him. The order is widely ignored. 